Broadcasting live four days a week worldwide. From the sunny beaches of Southern California. This is ExtremeHealthRadio.com. Hi, this is Jessica Ortner from TheTappingSolution.com, and I am thrilled to be on Extreme Health Radio with Justin and Kate. Tune in. It's going to be an awesome show. Are you ready to feel younger and healthier? Harness the healing power of the sea. Take control of your health and visit ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash C, S-E-A, and use the coupon code Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, and get 20% off. Discover the secret to eternal youth. Kate, okay, are you ready for this one? For what? For the show. Oh, well, yeah. Don't, don't I look We're on a show. It turns out we're on a show today. <laughs> <laughs> turns out why we're sitting at this giant desk in this room with all this equipment, huh? But we have a show today. This is going to be a really fun show. This is actually the first time we've ever talked about feng shui on the show. I think Maggie's upset. I'm going to have to let her out. Hold on. Uh-oh. No problem. Yeah, this is actually the first time that we've ever talked about this particular subject, feng shui, and I think it's really, really incredibly valuable and powerful to understand how energy works and how our surroundings, our living situation actually plays a role in our our attitude, our mental health, our emotions, and all that kind of stuff. I think it's critical. Yes, I'm super excited. I've heard a few podcasts on it, and uh, I'm so intrigued. I know, right? I'm so intrigued by this. So listen great. to this. So this is so apropos. I was reading this book last night. I have to read this. It's a little bit long, but I just have to read it by Stuart Wilde, The Infinite Self. And he says, another discipline I have found particularly important is to establish order in your life. Messy surroundings and an untidy life reflect a weakened physical and psychological state. If you are powerful, you will dominate your life. You will find time to clean up and order things, and you will, you will want to do that as part of your personal discipline. Hmm. Mess is the external manifestation of the ego's disquiet and laziness. Through mess, the ego exercises control over you. It's the brat within, obsessed with self, waiting for its mother to pick up after it. Or sometimes the brat from hell is just too important and special and full of itself to do mundane stuff like cleaning up and washing dishes. All the more reason to give it a whole pile of stuff to polish and clean. The more you accommodate the brat, the more it will make your life a misery. Make your life as immaculate as possible and keep things zen and neat. Order helps you feel confident. Life becomes a prayer rather than a chaotic manifesto of an immature mind. The effort it takes to establish order is recouped in several ways. As an affirmation of control, it helps you feel more secure. It allows for a better flow of ideas, and most importantly, don't waste energy hunting for things and stepping over a dead horse in the hallway every time the doorbell goes off. So I read that last night before bed. Of I was course. Just, yeah, I mean, how apropos is that, right? Beautiful. Just fascinating. It's just so interesting that that came up the day before we're going to do an interview with Tisha Morris on Feng Shui. Hmm. So I just wanted to read that. This is episode 294. And we're with Tisha Morris today, and her website is tishamorris.com, T-I-S-H-A-M-O-R-R-I-S, tishamorris.com. And uh, this is episode 294, Wednesday, August 6th, 2014. And she is a feng shui consultant and author of Mind, Body, Home, and Feng Shui, Your Life, The Quick Guide to Decluttering Your Home and Renewing Your Life. So this is going to be a really, really great show, and she's really interested in Chinese medicine, Yoga, Buddhism, shamanism, sacred geometry, reconnective healing, numerology, and all kinds of stuff. So it's um, just going to be great to talk with her. And thanks so much, Tisha, for joining us today. Thank you, guys. I'm already having um, a love affair with you guys, starting out with the Stuart Wilde quote. So uh, awesome. I know. It was just so crazy that I actually read that last night. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I have a quote of his in my book, actually, and then maybe in one of the breaks, I'll actually find it. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, it was just so apropos, and I thought last night as I was reading this, I have to, I have to share this because, um, you know, talking about feng shui today. So, how did you get involved in feng shui to begin with? Well, I never set out to be a feng shui consultant. Um, <laughs> I actually practiced law for 
well, 10, 12 years or so. Um, but it was very quick, quickly into my career that I knew I did not want to be an attorney. And so I actually went and got an interior design degree um, and thought I wanted to be an interior designer. Well, I got the degree and realized it was much more technical than I than I really wanted. And so around that time, I started doing yoga and really getting into yoga and just really starting to understand the mind-body connection. And, you know, I always, always credit yoga as kind of the bridge um, for me into from going from the left brain to the right brain and going into that, that energy world. And it introduced me to energy in general. And so really it kind of all culminated when I bought this house that needed a complete renovation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not a a renovator at all. (laughs) I'm good at painting walls and that's, that's about it. Yeah. Likewise. Um, Yeah. And so, but anyway, as I was renovating this house, um, I mean, I'm talking about from the the electrical system to the HVAC to you know, every component in this house, I started observing these correlating aspects taking place within myself and my life. Is as the house was being renovated, I was being renovated, and so experiencing such an interrelation of energy between me and my home was just so mind blowing and eye opening. And so I started documenting these things, mm-hmm. and this was actually so I actually started writing um, this book, Mind Body Home, the, my more recent one. I started writing this before I ever started even practicing feng shui. Really, mm-hmm. and it's of course then it led me to. Um, you know, to study um, study feng shui and then eventually practice feng shui. Wow. So how did, when you were getting the uh, renovations done in your house, like let's say they were gutting the kitchen or doing some work on a certain area of the house, what was happening in your own life that corresponded with that and how did hmm. you recognize that? There was a, a poignant moment. Actually, there was a, a, a time where I actually owned my previous house and this house at the same time. There was like a you know, two or three week overlap. And within... And they were just down the street from each other, so I'd like go, go like you know back and forth. Oh, okay. And within minutes, I mean literally within minutes, both of the air conditioning systems went out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And I was like, okay, this is not coincidental. And so, um, and what was going on? I was completely exhausted. I mean, like my my air, the air in me was completely out. Huh. And I realized that this was, and so our home, because our energy is so so intimately um, connected with our home, is just a manifestation of ourself. You know, our home is our second to our skin, is an it's an extension of our own energy self, and it it starts manifesting uh, what's going on with us. And just like our dreams, our dreams are a manifestation of you know if we're if we're tired or exhausted or, or something's going on emotionally, it will show up in our dreams. Well, the same within our house. When things get to a certain point, our house starts taking on these energies as well. Um, and so, so the HVAC is about our own our, our air, our breathing system, um, just like the air filter is, you know, purifying um, toxins within, mm-hmm. our, within our lungs. Um, so it's, there, it's not, no coincident, coincidence that the house is always – you know, kind of resembled the face in like, you know, in all, in all traditions, it's been um, analogized with the body, um, even in Christianity and all, in all religions. And so, you know, it takes on these, these personas of ourselves. Interesting. Yeah, it's really fascinating to, um, to me because Kate and I have been working on this ourselves. And, um, you know, the space that you surround yourself in, if you go into someone's house and they have – you know, clutter everywhere, and you see it on that. What's that TV show called? Hoarders. Where, yeah, hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> hoarders. You know, you walk into these people's houses and their homes, and you just feel so bad for them, and you realize, you see the depression there. Uh, there's, in my mind, a, an obvious link and an obvious connection between, um, I'm not sure which comes first, though. Is someone depressed because they live in a situation like that, or are they, are they, um, is it the other way around? You know, it's interesting. Yeah, it's both, actually. It's, and so this is the beauty, and this is this is actually why I, I practice feng shui now, is because as you make changes to your home, you make changes to your life. And so when you make conscious changes to your home, you can really make some 
some great changes, um, conscious changes to your life. And if you start thinking of your house as almost like a healing modality, just like you know acupuncture or any other um, alternative medicine, it can be a really powerful tool that's like right under your nose. And so part of my mission is to really, you know, open our eyes and, and, and seeing just how important our home environment is. I feel like it's been overlooked in the um, holistic world is, um, and it's, to me, it's, it's everything. I mean, it, it will reflect all of our, all of your neuroses, all of your challenges and all of your beauty. Yeah. Um, it's all right there. It's, yeah, it's just it, a mirror. It does. Are there, are there parts of the home that are more important than others? You know, I always say the goal of feng shui is to love every square inch of your house. Mm, that's and, beautiful. you know, some little, a kitchen drawer, you know, is, is really as important as your living room in some ways. Um, they're all a component of us. You know, closets are kind of our, our shadow side of what we're not wanting people to see. Um, and so, so no, not one is, one is not more important than the other. They just represent different aspects of ourselves. That makes sense. It's, yeah. it's, it's really interesting to me too, because when you start cleaning up your home, we've been doing this. Uh, oh my gosh. The last better. year we've just been like <laughs> trash bags of stuff out and it just yeah. feels so liberating. And we're learning more about feng shui. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's obviously easier to do when you sort of declutter yourself, but it teaches you a lot. That's not about, um, attachments to things and, and feeling. It, it brings that spiritual component of, attachment and leaving that attachment behind and Mm. you know to me at least decluttering i'm not so sure about feng shui because i don't know enough about it yet but um at least decluttering kind of represents to me like internal cleansing and and doing like a like a juice cleanse or colon cleanse it's like an extension of that at least in my mind but Exactly. It's actually what I always say. It's it's energy healing. It is when you're cleaning clutter, it's the same as like, getting energy work done to your body. It's your our things hold memories and well they hold energy of course, but they also hold memories and attachments like you're saying. Mm. And so when we um release that, you're releasing energy, um stagnant energy from your body. It's very, very, very powerful. Uh-huh. And um and so by the way, when you are decluttering, yes, you are doing feng shui. Um, oh you are. You are. Yes. Fun, uh, decluttering is, I always say, the very first step in feng shui. Okay. And it's become you know, a very important component of feng shui. Obviously, 4,000 years ago when feng shui was, you know, first started to be used, clutter was not such an issue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know, nowadays it is a big, a big, part, um, big, part, of, big part of our, li- our consumer lives. And it is the first step. You could have the most perfect feng shui floor plan, the most perfect, you know, arranged um, furniture, but the clutter is it's such an energy suck. Mm-hmm. And um, do you work with a lot of people that have this? Do you go into people's homes and help them, or, or how do you work yes. with people? Yeah. Yes, I do. Wow. And do you do you see? Do you walk in and are you? I mean, not to label things, but are are you horrified and shocked at some <laughs> some people, or, or how would you label that? <laughs> no comment. I'm just yeah, no comment. <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> no, for the, um, no, for the most part, um, yeah, I don't typically work with hoarding clients. Um, that doesn't seem to come into my my sphere. Um, but you know, with the, the beauty of like a lot of times when I go to people's homes is they actually see their space through through a new pair of eyes, and a lot of times um, that's all they need is. Mm-hmm is to see their, their space through someone else's eyes. And so I'm, I'm just kind of a mirror for them. And they start seeing, oh, wow, I didn't really ever notice that, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, with, with regards to clutter, I can usually um, fill into the energy pretty well and kind of help them um, prioritize which areas should be focused on first and so that kind of come up with a plan so that it's not overwhelming. So, are, so, oh, go ahead. Are people pretty astonished, even in the beginning stages when they start, you know, the very low levels of maybe decluttering, that things in their life start happening pretty right away and changes, and they can really yeah. see a difference? Yeah, you know, it's it, sometimes it's very immediate and very dramatic changes, like you know, getting a job. Sometimes actually losing a job. I mean, there's hmm. like you know, the energy shifts big time, wow. and then other times it's just more subtle work of just they just feel good feel better yeah. you know when you when you feel better i mean the rippling effect that that has is is just you know 
is just amazing. You know, just, it affects into every area of your life. Yeah. yeah it just cascades forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, feeling, feeling good in your space. I mean, I, I, that I can't imagine anything. I mean, that's, that's the next best thing of feeling good in your body. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You know what I love about the work that you do? And it's similar to, um, to, to the stuff that we do. Cause really this show is about, it's, it's a lot about health, but really we're just using health as a tool. You know, people can have many different tools like feng shui, but, um, you know, this website is about empowering people to live the kind of life that they want to live and to live their purpose. And, w- and an amazing way to do that is to change your diet and start building daily disciplines and start adding things in instead of focusing on what you can't have and these types of things. And I imagine that feng shui, because I saw on your video today, uh, you talked about transforming your life through transforming your space. And I imagine it's very much similar. If people can get a grasp and a handle on um, organizing their home environment, um, it's just such a powerful tool that I bet they walk away thinking, gosh, look at all the great stuff that came from this. What else can I do in my life? Mm. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. If you don't have, if you don't have control or power of your space, what, what do you have control and power yeah, over? Right? Um, mm. yeah. So where yeah. does feng shui, what is it? Where, where does it come from? What does the name mean? It translates into wind water. And it was, it comes out of um, China from, you know, thousands of years ago. And it was first used to locate auspicious um, places for burial, for burial grounds, you know, in the, you know, way back when, you know, burial sites were much more important than, than I think we, we give them credit to today, you know, just like the pyramids were for that. Mm-hmm. And so that's what feng shui was used for. And then it, then it became to where finding just, you know, locations for living. And then it's actually more in our modern history where it actually was brought in inside the home. Uh, but it can definitely, you know, I definitely work with people of finding, you know, locating their next house. And, you know, just there is a lot to be said. I mean, this is the one thing realtors and feng shui, feng shui um, practitioners can agree on is location, location, location. And so this, the original, you know, point of feng shui is still very much alive and well. It- is there an element of like the electromagnetic radiation that comes off in feng shui? Is there a way of knowing that? Because a lot of times these people have, or most houses these days have dirty electricity in the walls yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yes, Do you work with yes. That? I actually have a tri-field, what's called a tri-field meter that I carry with me and it measures, it's a scientific instrument that measures um, electromagnetic energy. So yes, you're exactly right. Wow. And, you know, it's, there's usually nothing you can do about it if, if it, if it, if it, um, if it's extra high, except for to make sure you're not sleeping, you know, near one of those walls or over one of those lines or having like food in that area. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. And so, um, when you work with people, you'll go into their homes and, uh, give them some ideas about what to do in their home and, um, sort of, you know, tips for decluttering as well. Yes, you know, everyone everyone approaches feng shui from a different place in, in that some one client might just want to, you know, increase their financial opportunities, whereas someone else may just want their living room to, you know, feel better or look pretty. Um, someone else might be having a health challenge and, and correlate it with, with, with their house. A lot of times... As soon as someone moves into a house, you know, s- sudden sudden shifts or sudden things happen that are maybe not so good, and they're they're realizing there is a correlation with the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I kind of meet people where they are, and, and and my first priority is addressing, you know, why they, you know, what's going on with them, and wh- why they um, need some help. And usually, sometimes some other red flags might jump out while I'm there that. Um, that may or may not correlate with the issue, but yeah, I can see that. Did you want to see? Amber Marie in the chat room wanted to know what eleven spaces are? What's? Oh yes, I just read about eleven spaces. Oh well, there we go. On my um, blog. Wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, what she's referring to is numerology for your home, and you know, a big part of my book, Mind Body Home, is really honoring our houses as, as their own unique soul. And each, each space has its own soul, own personality. And one of the telltale signs that gives us an idea of our home's personality is its numerology. And the way you find your home's numerology is that you add the, um, the numbers of the street address. So example, if you lived at 
um, 314 Elm Street, you would add 3 plus 1 plus 4. Mm-hmm. You keep adding it until you come to a single digit. And so, except for 11 and 22, um, they're kind of considered little special numbers. Oh. And so 11 space, what I find is um, people, they don't, there's not a lot of turnover with 11 spaces because they're, they're just a little extra special. Um, there's a blog article I just posted last week about um, there's a famous um, uh, space in, in, in New York City, 740 Park Avenue, that documentaries have been made about where that's home to the most billionaires in the world. Oh, my goodness. And so no coincidence that it's, a, it's an 11 space. Yeah, right? Wow. Yeah. So it's just um, 11 in numerology in general is a little, uh, has to do with like um, psychic, psychic powers and energy and um, – and so, anyway, what I what I've personally seen with eleven spaces is people just—it's just, just an extra special energy that the house has. I don't know how else to, how else to put it. Um, mm-hmm. I've actually seen um, couples when they divorce from eleven, ha- like really fight over who gets to keep the house. <laughs> oh no! Um, like on that extra level because it's 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 that special. Wow! <laughs> oh wow! Like wedding crashers, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's fascinating. Mm. It's interesting because a while back, uh, I, I was listening to, I think, the latest Hay House Summit with Louise Hay, and she was talking about how she, um, when, when she got up every morning, she would thank her bed, and she would thank her clothes, and she would thank these seemingly inanimate objects. But um, And so people, she said, and initially thought she was nuts because she was you know, thanking these mm-hmm. things. Her are, bed for a good night's sleep. Yeah, her bed for a good night's sleep and her clothes for keeping her warm and things like that. And um, But in actuality, everything vibrates, everything's frequency. And when you bring something into your home, uh, even though it looks like a solid piece of wood or a solid piece of uh, art or something, it does carry with it some sort of energy and vibration, doesn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it's wild. And so I wonder if there's uh, things that people bring. Are there things people bring into their home that they may not know that could be bringing a bad energy or a negative vibration? De- definitely. I. So now you're starting to start. You're starting to tread into the area of space clearing. Okay. Um, which is energy clearing um, spaces, and but you can it also applies to objects and furniture. And so yes, definitely. With if you buy something like an antique something that has some age on it um, or maybe gosh you know what I see a lot um, people who buy like those like tribal masks from other countries oh yeah <laughs> um, <Uh-oh>. <laughs> yeah be, be really careful and mindful and uh, of that and but it, it, you can space clear things um, and we can talk about that later in the program if you'd like but um, to kind of energy clear the energy from from objects because, because you're right. Um, and you know, just the first step probably is before you buy something like that, you know, really kind of, you know, check in with your, with your internal compass, make sure it feels right to you. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're extra sensitive, you can just like hold the object and, you know, if, if you get a funny feeling or, mm-hmm. yeah. um, then, you know, tap into your intuition because you're exactly right. Everything's energy. It has its own little world, go- little micro world going on with itself. Yeah. It has its own energy. It has energy people have projected onto it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we so. had that personally when we moved into this place. It was about a month and a half into just first moving in when we started having weird things happening in the house. And I thought, this isn't anything we've brought in. It's something that the house has held the memory of and we cleared it and it never came back. But I never really seen firsthand that energy world in our space and it felt very um, violating. Yeah, it did. Yes, Yes, this is exactly why space clearing is so important, um, especially the first time when you move into a space because... You know, you want to start your life, your new life, and your new space on on a clean slate, and yeah. you don't really want to be living under the the energy of of the previous owners. Um, yeah. so. That makes sense. Well, well maybe we'll, let's take a little break, and maybe when we get back, we can talk about how to do that. Yeah, because, I love uh, this. I think a lot of people would find that valuable. We're with uh, Tisha Morris. If you want to check out her website, she's got a bunch of them. Tisha Morris dot com. T i s h a m o r r i s dot com. And she's also got feng shui certification course.com as well as feng shui for the planet.org. 
and smudgespray.com. It'd be interesting to check out that. Yeah. So make sure to check that out. And this is episode 294, and we'll be right back with Tisha right after this break. I wanted to tell you about this really powerful and unique product called the Q Laser. Did you know there's over 2,500 peer-reviewed clinical research studies showing the benefits of low-level laser therapy on the body? We had Dr. Larry Lytle on episode 165 talking all about it. Dr. Lytle, what is the Q Laser? The Q Laser is a light delivering device, handheld, rechargeable, that is for lay people and professionals that works at the cell level of the body to restore energy. Since the body is all composed of cells and the cells are composed of atoms, it's good for any and everything in the body. It is especially beneficial for injuries. It will reduce swelling and inflammation before your eyes. Literally, you can have a sprained ankle and fly the laser, and within 30 minutes, you can see that the swelling in the ankle has been reduced. Since all disease is inflammatory, you can assume that the same process is working if you have some type of intestinal problem. We have pictures of using a light, a heat instrument to diagnose the intestinal inflammation. We can show that that intestinal inflammation is pretty much gone within three minutes using the Q1000 laser. It's the number one tool in your medicine cabinet. I have a saying, never leave home without your laser. I have had three serious burns, and each time I had my laser with me, I applied the laser immediately after I had the burn. I never even blistered. Kate and I don't want to be without ours. We've worked out a special deal with Dr. Lytle for all of our listeners. If you'd like to learn more about how the Q laser can dramatically improve your health, go to extremehealthradio.com slash laser. Feel younger and feel healthier. Harness the power of the C through Essence C, delivering you whole body wellness. Essence C supplements are specifically formulated using active C-based minerals at levels that correspond directly to the nutritional makeup of the human body. The unique and original Essence C product line is enhanced by the legendary Dr. Ron Cousin's proprietary processing technology increasing the efficiency and speed of nutrient delivery into our system. Achieve optimal hydration and mineral balance, decalcify the body to provide rapid relief from chronic diseases and ailments like inflammation and digestive dysfunctions. Essence C is a life-restoring solution to ensure optimal health and wellness. Visit extremehealthradio.com forward slash C, S-E-A, today and discover the secret to eternal youth. If you enter the coupon code JUSTIN, J-U-S-T-I-N, you'll get a 20% discount on all orders for a limited time. So why wait to be well? Go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash C. 100% listener supported. Extreme Health Radio. Opening minds and transforming lives worldwide. Worldwide. Don't forget to join our thriving community for health tips, inspiration, and show updates. At extremehealthradio.com slash Facebook. All right, this is episode 294 with Tisha Morris. I'm so glad you guys are available and listening to the show. We're so excited to uh, talk with her about feng shui. And, uh, if you guys want to keep up to date with everything we have going on, I'd say the best way to do that is to, to sign up to our newsletter list. Uh, we have a ton of stuff going on. Tomorrow we have Dr. Lloyd Jenkins. We'll be talking about the Budwig Protocol for Cancer. Uh, then we have on Friday, our Free For All Friday show, where Kate and I just talk and, and take your questions and have fun. <laughs> Next week we've got Mer- Meridian Grace. Uh, out of Texas again, our good friend Meridian and uh, Mike Adams from Natural News and Daniel Vitalis, lots of good people. So make sure to stay up to date and you can do that on our email list. And uh, also, if you have any questions about the uh, the laser or the S&C products uh, from one of our sponsors, please let me know. I'd love to help you out. Uh, we just are so grateful and honored to be working with our sponsors and um, like S&C and things like that. So please visit their page, our sponsor page on our website if you can. Uh, that helps keep the keep the show free. And before the break, we are talking about space clearing, right, Kate? Yeah, I'm so interested in this. Yeah, so the idea, Tisha, is um, when you move into a new apartment or you move into a new house or something, uh, there are techniques you can do to uh, clear the energy from the existing owners. Is that correct? You got it. Wow. Are there many ways to do that? 
Yes. Yeah. So, and it's not just, you know, not just when you move into a space, there's a many different um, times in which you would space clear, you know, even if you know, got into a big argument, you know, you want, or if um, maybe your ex moved out, you know, you want to clear the energy. I mean, there's a million reasons you have a big dinner party, a million reasons you want to, you know, kind of keep your energy clear. Yeah, I was because, just thinking about that. Yeah, with if you have a big party, that that's a good good point. Yeah, and not not that there's anything negative with the party necessarily, but you know, you just don't not always want other people's energy in your space. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing with energy and is and, and it's why why we always talk about negative energy when it comes to energy is because unfortunately it's the negative energy that's the most dense and that it tends to hang around more yeah. <laughs> whereas you know happy energy it's light it kind of just kind of flitters and floats around <laughs> but yeah. it's the that that um because you know energy there's a vibration and, and so it's the denser energy it hangs around. and so what happens is when you have this dense energy it attracts more dense energy so you would if you have a big arg- argument in your kitchen it's going to attract more arguments in your kitchen because mm. like attracts like, and so it starts building and building and building this little energy, dense energy ball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so this is why it's really important to, you know, keep your space, space clear on a, on a periodic, on a periodic level. I usually like to, anytime I give my house a good, like, physical cleaning, like, and, um, I will follow it up with a nice little space clearing. Um, wow. Just to kind of keep it, keep it fresh. And, you know, once you start doing it, I mean, like, you can see the difference in your space. Like, it's almost as if you've, like, cleaned your glasses or your contacts. It's, everything's just a little crisper. Huh. Wow. And how do you do, you uh, personally do space clearing for yourself? Yeah, well, actually, I'm, I actually make a spray that's based on, it's called smudge spray. It's based on, the, the most popular and traditional way is what's called sage smudging. You've, most everyone's probably seen the bundle of sage, mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, dried sage. And this is the most, most common. It's very effective. And you just, you light the end of the sage and you, you always want to start out with an intention of, okay, why am I space clearing to, you know, is it to clear the previous owner's energy? Is it to, you know, clear the argument I had with my son? You know, having, having a, an intention, it can be, it can be very general. Or it can be very specific, however you want it to be. And then, Waft waft around your um, your sage. If it's if you're using sage, you you can you know waft the sage stick around with with it burning. If you're using my spray, then you would you know do some sprays here and there. If your um, other methods are using bells, um, yeah. What's up with the bells? I've wondered about that. Yeah, the bells are great. I use those a lot with with clients um, as well. The bells and there's you know different kinds of bells, obviously, but. Um, metal bells tend to tend to work best, hmm. and you know it, it just breaks up any kind of dense energy. It also kind of puts the the house on kind of like one note, so to speak. So, oh, it's, so a it's a nice a sound thing, right? Then, yeah, yeah, clearing through sound. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I I don't I haven't found singing bowls to be particularly effective um, as far as sound. I mean, they're very pretty and a nice maybe a nice invocation. Um, are those those crystal bowls you're talking about? Yeah, sometimes they come in or the metal. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, I've seen those. Those are those big kind of bowls people use for different uh, practices and uh, sound workers and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. So after you use your your method, then I um, mean, I, I really focus on the corners of a room. Um, that tends to be where the energy coagulates more, kind of like where you find the dust bunnies and the cobwebs. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's indicative of some d- little dense energy collecting over there. Um, and then once you've done the the actual clearing, then you know, kind of what I call give it the space like an invocation or or a blessing, and it could be you know a prayer, a mantra. You know, light a candle, light incense, maybe do your singing bowl then. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would imagine that this would be beneficial for someone who, maybe a lady who wants to give birth at home or mm. maybe a hospital room or yes. um, things like that. I imagine if someone's sick in a room, right? Well, you know, I, yeah, I'm sure that's a big deal. And I've also been thinking this whole time that <clears throat> Tisha brought it up is, you know, I work one day a week at a salon for 15 years. I've done hair where 
I feel the energy from person to person sitting in my chair. It just becomes more negative throughout the day. It's like, <laughs> I'm a pretty positive person and I feel like everyone who sits down just sucks the life out of me. So I'm, I'm starting to get this idea of like, hey, spray the smudge spray between yes. each client. Oh, that's a good idea. That's yes. That's a beautiful idea. Yes. This is why I came up with the spray because there's so many environments where the smoke is inappropriate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I have a, a lot of, a lot of customers who use it for um, between um, healing clients, but the same with with the hair. I mean, yes. Oh my gosh, the the DNA that our hair holds. I mean, you're just surrounded by it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is like I had an aha moment just with you talking about that. I'm like, no yeah. wonder because I've you know been dealing with a few health challenges and just this energy just I'm just zapped, and so I go, no wonder there's all this stuff going on. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, you're like you're doing energy work yourself. I mean, you're re- totally releasing. They're being I mean, releasing right. stuff off of them, <laughs> right? No, you're totally right. I'm, yeah, that's I'm true. in the trenches, man. I need some spray. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, how do we get a hold of your spray? I'm looking on your site. Is it temporarily unavailable? Um, it should not be. Okay, I think I hit a wrong a wrong thing here. I'll have to um, find it. Yeah, tissuemorse.com, and there's uh, the shop tab. Okay. That yeah. is so interesting. And so, um, so when your clients work with you, can they use? Uh, or do they, do they typically end up getting the spray and telling you how it works for them and things? Yeah, well, usually if, if you hire me for consultation, I'll, I'll actually bring you a complimentary bottle. Um, oh. But, oh, that's cool. Yeah, but um, it's very, very effective. It's, it's, actually more, it's actually more effective than burning sage because it has a rose water base, so it kind of has the properties of clearing plus the, the properties of raising the vibration of the space. Um, so it's, 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 it's a nice little product, I must say. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see them all right here. I finally got on. That's beautiful. Wow. And they're very affordable for people. Yeah. I try to keep them as, as, as price conscious as possible. Wow. That's so cool. What so a, cool a while thing. back, we, um, we heard something about feng shui, and we heard that um, when you walk into your entryway and to your door um, – the corner that's on the far the far left corner of whatever room that is uh, is associated. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. Is associated with is it, is it money, Kate? Is that what we heard? I believe it is. Is that true? Is that you're, true? you're spot on. <laughs> we had wow. our trash can. We had our there. trash can there for a while, ah. <laughs> and we moved it. And I'll tell you, things have changed. But we were like <laughs> mortified when we when we first heard that. Well, it's better than your toilet. So true. You're true. I know, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. So th- that corner is associated with money. Yeah. Very interesting. So, yeah, you, what you're referring to is what's called the Bagua map, B-A-G-U-A, and it's basically like a tic-tac-toe grid over your floor plan. And and so, yeah, the, the, the back left corner from your front door is the money corner or the wealth corner or the abundance corner. And so, yeah, it can be really quick and easy just to, you know, what's in that corner? Oh, my gosh, trash can. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> the good news is, I mean, it's much easier to move a trash can than it is the, than a toilet. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Is well, it just as important to not only remove that item if you can, like the trash can, but is it is it just as important to add something into that corner? So, good question. You know, I kind of come up with like a three-step process okay. for, for feng shui. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, that is the first step, removing, removing anything that's a block or energy block, such as a trash can or, or clutter or, um, you know, removing is the first step. And then after you remove what you need to remove, if anything, then rearranging if necessary. So, after you move the trash can, maybe you like rearrange some other things so that, you know, um, because the trash can has to go somewhere else, so just kind of rearranging things, and then only then do you think about adding something. Mm. Um, and that can be um, adding something to charge that space. So you know, there's different aspects to each section of the Bagua map. And so for the wealth corner, things that are auspicious for the wealth corner would be plants, because um, they represent growth, um, and there's a color associated with each of the sections as well. The, the color associated with that section is the color purple. Um, you know, colors ha- have an energy, and in our collective consciousness, we um, think of the color purple, or at least in our Western, our, our Western psychology, um, purple is in the color of money. Mm-hmm. Um, green is would be as well, which green is about growth. So again, the plants. Or purple could be like um, a royal kind of thing too, right? Yeah, t- exactly. Oh, right. Uh, so it could be, you know, for example, a piece of amethyst, purple amethyst you could put over there and, you know, with an intention. 
you always want to add add intention anytime you're you're adding an object. Also, add intention with it. Again, mm. this is just about bringing more consciousness into our space. Is really what we're talking about here. It's being conscious. Yeah, yeah. and so I like what you said. The plants rep- represent growth because one of our frequent guests who comes on a lot, Daniel Vitalis, he talks about rewilding your home and sort of bringing um, you know ancient things or or natural or natural based things into your home. And plants are one of them. And uh, but I like what you said about that because. Uh, plants represent growth, so you want to put the plants in an area of your life where you want to grow. Mm-hmm, exactly. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Ask her. Ask her the question too. We talked about at the break about the paint, which was interesting. Oh yeah, I saw. So a while back, um, a guest on our show, uh, David Wolf, he's really into raw food and, and and that kind of thing. I remember him talking years ago about how he had a house one time and he was setting up uh, the house and painting it. And what he did was somehow he was able to get uh, some crystals like amethyst crystals and other types of crystals and grind them and have them ground into this really fine powder and he would put that into his organic paint that he had and it was so fine that you couldn't see the crystals it wasn't like there's chunks Mm -hmm. or anything Um, and I always thought that was really interesting because he would put uh, the crystal into the walls and so he was sort of Hmm. infusing this really high vibrational energy from the crystals into the walls. Do you think that would be something? I mean, obviously I people wouldn't that. do that, but I thought that was really, <laughs> I'd never heard of that before. I love that. That's, I love that. I've also heard of people, <laughs> people who are very, um, very much feng shui enthusiasts who want to use the boggle map very strictly, so to speak, um, to add little color pigment into the paint. Um, because for example, if you, if you want the purple energy in the, your wealth corner, but you don't necessarily want a purple room, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, you know, adding a little bit of the color p- pigment um, into your paint bucket. Um, so a similar concept with the crystal. But I love, I love the um, the idea of grinding the the crystals in there. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of people doing them for T-shirts and things like that too, with the flower of life and mm. uh, just some interesting mm. ideas like that. But Amber uh, in the chat room though was saying she wonders if grinding them down changes the energy in a in a bad way. I wonder if crystals are just like no matter what form they're in are just as powerful. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sort of like damaging them. <clears> you <yeah>. wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you're not doing the wrong thing. But <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, crystals are fascinating. I, I love I love working with crystals, and I incorporate it a lot of a lot of times into the feng shui practice because because you know a lot of you know, a big part of feng shui again is is just adding the intention and the consciousness into our space, and crystals do that as well. You know, and tell me if you work with crystals, you you, you know, give them an intention or what I call it, you give your crystal a job. They like to <laughs> like to have jobs, uh-huh. and um, and so you can incorporate that with with um, into your space. Yeah, interesting. So we're going to take a little bit of a break right now. This is really fascinating stuff. We're going to be back with Tisha Morris, but um, I'm on her website right now, and I'm looking at one of the PDFs that she has. And it turns out that, at least for us, it's ant season. And <laughs> she's got some interesting things to say about ants on this PDF that I uh, – it was quick reference, quick reference of mind-body-home connections. And so just there's some really interesting correlations between the different rooms in our houses. She talks about burglars, cockroaches, clogged toilet, a deck or a patio. Some really interesting things I want to ask her about some of these uh, really fascinating uh, subjects. So we're with Tisha Morris. This is episode 294, and her website is tishamorris.com. And we'll be right, right back after this break. I have to say I have been absolutely loving this product by... Tristan Truscott and Peter Ragnar called Good Morning, Good Evening, Qigong. If you want to listen to the interview we did with Tristan, you can go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash 127. And Qigong is a great way to de-stress the body. And as you know, there's a huge component to disease caused by stress. And stress is a huge factor in how we live our lives and the amount of energy we have and the amount of vitality we have. And so, Dr. Shade, what do you think about Qigong? People come to me and they're really sick and they got this blown out neurological system and all this toxicity. And I tell them, you need to do Qigong, Tai Chi. You need to do these things that settle down and restore your neurology because it puts together all the parts. It puts you back into that state where you can start to detoxify. Mm. And so I highly, highly recommend all that. And what about you, Kit Campbell? What do you think about Qigong? Do you like it as well? Qigong is 
amazing. And the reason that I believe it to be amazing is everything here is energy. That is a scientific fact, if there ever is one. So mm-hmm. when you're practicing Qigong, you're actually drawing energy into your body. Your intention, whatever your intention is behind any action, will determine the level of energy, type of energy that you absorb into your body. So your intention behind you is very important, just like thought. So when you're practicing Qigong, you're actually bringing energy in and you're bringing out the stuff that might be a bit stale. With Tai Chi, it's totally different. The energy runs underneath the skin because it's a, it's more of a, a martial, this is the Chinese understanding, by the way. It's more of a martial art. So Qigong is very, very good for bringing that energy into the body and just fantastic. If you're interested in picking up this Qigong course by Tristan Truscott, and Peter Ragnar, go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash Qigong, that's Q-I-G-O-N-G, and you can learn more about it. There's a great video on that page, and you can learn more about it on that page, and I highly, highly recommend this product. I love it myself, so go ahead and check that out, extremehealthradio.com forward slash Qigong. Hey guys, if you've been following our work for any length of time, you know that I'm a big fan of raw food. I did a raw food diet actually from 2003 to 2010, 100%, and I loved it. And raw food is a huge part of my diet, and I just love it. And if you're interested in making healthy, really amazing raw food dishes without spending hours and hours in the kitchen, I would highly recommend checking out a program put together by Russell James called the Raw Chef Program. You could check it out at extremehealthradio.com slash raw chef chef and I have to say it's absolutely incredible I have it and it's got hundreds of hours of I think it's hundreds of hours of video professionally done video along with workbooks and PDF files and he walks you through how to make the most amazing delicious raw food meals that don't take forever everything from mock pizzas and pasta to ice cream to cheese to br- to fluffy bread if you can imagine it it's incredible so I highly recommend you checking it out it's uh, you can check it out at extreme health radio.com slash raw chef and i think you are absolutely gonna love this program so check it out now free, free, free. all free shows all the time on extreme health radio opening minds and transforming oh, just, lives worldwide join our community today sign up to our email list and instantly get our free gift to you along with loads of inspirational content and cutting edge tips to help change your life at extreme health radio.com slash subscribe I never know how much this is going to be wow. blowing our, our our brains out with these <laughs> sound. <laughs> Commercials coming uh, at I'm me. I'm sure we're violating some sort of sound uh, <laughs> order there. In our own heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank all you guys for joining us in the live chat room and on the live show. This is episode 294. Two plus nine plus four. And I wonder if there's some new... Oh, new inter- um, Tisha would know. I know, she would know. We're Tisha Morris from TishaMorris.com. And um, let me lower this music a little bit. Uh, Tisha, I wanted to ask you, Kate and I were just talking during the break. I did, you know, the, We have listeners from all over the world. If someone's in South Africa or in New York or somewhere uh, where you are not, is there a, an online product or course that you have that... The, where you could walk people through how to do feng shui on their house? I do. I have one that starts on Monday. It's a feng shui DIY course. So I teach you how to feng shui your own home. It's um, accessible. Um, I'll have a month, uh, excuse me, a weekly call, a phone call, and I will also have a video link as well. So you can um, tune in by phone or online. It's uh, one, once a week for four weeks, starting on Monday, and you can find that um, on my website, tishamorse.com slash feng shui course, and it's a lot of fun. You know, I, I try to make feng shui as practical I mean, as, as possible, because it's, it's a very vast you know, science, and yet there's ways to, we can really make it pretty simple, um, so that's what I try to do for people. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool because a lot of people, you know, obviously would love to have you come out to their home and, you know, a lot of our listeners. But so you have these calls and how often do you do uh, do these types of things? I usually have this course about four times a year. I also have other courses throughout the year. I have a clutter clearing course. It's like a nine day like boot camp. 
um, that I usually have in the spring. I also have um, a 27-day challenge that I'll probably run again in the fall um, where you get an email each day with a, with a mind challenge, a body challenge, and a home challenge. It's so much fun. And, uh, and then I have my certification course where I train people to become a feng shui consultants. Um, and I, um, getting my 2015 schedule together right now, but all the information is at feng shui certification course.com. That's wow. so cool. So you can actually train people and they'll become practitioners just like you in their area and they could meet with people and build up a, a little business like that. Exactly. I find that, um, it's for, you know, my, my marketer who I t- typically attract are, a lot of coaches who just want to add another tool to the tool belt or into designers or real estate agents, um, stagers um, that really, you know, I think we're realizing more and more and more just how important our spaces are mm-hmm. and how, um, I mean, you can see it in businesses. I mean, if, if it, or like restaurants and retail, I mean, if the, if the space isn't looking good and feeling good, the business is not going to do well unless mm-hmm. it's like a, you know, like a, barbecue place that's been in business for 50 years where they had the best barbecue in town. Right, right? right. <laughs> But other than that, you know, space um, is just becoming more and more important, um, which is great. It's so interesting because people are waking up more and more to this idea in general. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, influence that's coming over from the East and now people are starting to see the value of that kind of stuff and um, sort of merging, you know, like with the tapping solution where they're they're merging Eastern ideas and Western ideas through um, EFT points and acupuncture and things. It's funny because when you walk into a room or walk into a house, uh, your first you do get just sort of a really quick. Your mind just downloads this quick snapshot, doesn't it? Of do I like this place? What's you the get energy? The vibe, like? yeah. It just all ha- um, happens subconsciously, kind of, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, so fast. So we were looking at your little PDF thing on your website. And, <laughs> not so uh, little PDF. <laughs> yeah, not so little. And uh, we have ants. And it says, <laughs> <laughs> turns out that uh, according to the PDF, uh, annoyances in day-to-day life, industry, productivity, efficiency, and distractions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this, this, this list you're referring to is the, it's, it's the reference list. It's in the back of my um, book. And the book... Um, goes through each of those in more detail. Um, but then you had the quick reference list for, um, for, for moments where you're like, why are all these ants come out of nowhere? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting and you'll, you'll notice for yourself, like when the ants come and when they go, I mean, there's definitely, you know, times and, and regions where ants may be more prevalent, but there's a, there's a relation of like when they come and go. Hmm. Yeah, and there's definitely some sort of energetic representation too, like you said, um, annoyances in day-to-day life. I'm sure with everything that you bring in or experiences you have, if you look deep enough, I think that's the problem is, is what you were saying before, is before you're going to bring something into your life, you want to you know, just stop maybe for a second and feel the energy and look uh, inside and, and find out if this is something good to bring in. Cause I think you said that about those tiki masks or something, you know? And, yeah. 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 Again, it's, it's, it's all about just being conscious of our space. If you're not conscious of your space, what are you conscious of? You know, are there some spaces that just can't be helped? I mean, I know that you could feng shui it up the wazoo or paint it the right colors or put things in, but are there people that just don't fit in certain spaces and they just need to vomitose out of there? <laughs> yes and no. You know, I the feng shui starts with the land, mm. and I, uh, t- you know, I, I, this is something I teach in my certification course. Not every plot of land is meant to, to inhabitate, inha- inhabit, yeah, inhabitate. Am I saying that right? Wow. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, builders will you know throw houses anywhere they can, and and they're not all land is meant to live on. So the feng shui starts there. If, if there's something not good with the land for whatever reason there could be uh, several reasons that could be the case it will start to trickle up into the house and again you know like attracts like so whatever's negative will attract more negative and before long the house will be in foreclosure or there'll be a pattern of divorces in the house or you know whatever the case is and so that's where it starts and then as far as just not jiving with the house or something you know the first the first um Remedy would be, you know, space clearing it. Make sure there's not some um, old previous predecessor energy going on that's affecting you negatively. Hmm. Uh, but usually there's a reason why we're in the spaces we're in. And it's usually not just happenstance. 
And there's usually a like energy that, that, that attracts us to a space. Um, but if you have more consciousness around, you know, around all of it, you can make more conscious choices. For This comes up a lot in numerology. Mm-hmm. You know, the very first house that I bought way back when was a five space. And I grew up in five spaces my entire life. And so it was what I was f- familiar with. I, this, this time I didn't know anything about numerology or spaces at all. And so sure enough, I landed, landed in this five space because that's what I was used to. Um, now that I know myself better and understand numerology better and understand spaces better, I will look for the numerology of a space that, 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 that I know is more in alignment with what I need. Do you talk about the numerology aspect of all that in your book? Yes, I do. You do? Fascinating. Nice. Um, I'm curious about whether or not someone should put energy and intention into a place if they don't like it. Let's say they live in a place where they <laughs> say really... Say you're us. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you live in a place that you don't like uh, and you want to move to a more peaceful place. And mm-hmm. so I, I often wonder about this. Um, is it important to make the best of what you have until you move somewhere else? Or if or are you sort of solidifying and preventing um, other opportunities from happening because you're investing mm. in something that you really don't want to stay in? Yeah, that's a great question. And you need to love your house unlike you've ever had in your life. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> that will be the only way you will be able, be able to leave. I see. Okay. So you want to, even if you really dislike it, you need to just do that. Yeah, you need to find ways to love it. <laughs> I see. Wow, Justin, that's that, what you've been saying. I know that's exactly what I've been saying. Lately. <laughs> this is also the case for people in jobs. If there's no job you don't like, or a yeah, job you don't like, the best way to be able to get in a si- situation to be able to leave is to love your job as much as possible. Hmm. So something about doing that um, allows maybe maybe it's a lesson that you have to to learn. Maybe that's just the lesson, and then as soon as you learn that lesson, other you opportunities. Can move on. Yeah, yeah, there's a sense of. Um, completion about the space. It's like, um, you know, people who move in and they, they never put artwork up because they don't think they're going to stay very long. And then like a year or two has gone by and they still haven't put the artwork up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or unpacked boxes. I mean, people exactly. do that, huh? And they wonder why they haven't left yet. Well, it's because they need to, as soon as they hang up the, the artwork and get everything unpacked, then the opportunity will arise to allow them to move. Huh. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, that's exactly what Justin and I have been going through because we've lived in this place for four years and, you know, we're not that content here. It's not a lot of peace, but we thought we can't look at this home studio anymore like this. So we completely revamped it. And even though we wanted to leave, we had to create the space that we love being in. And I think it's really important. It's made a big difference yeah. for us in the last couple of months, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah th- I guess there's something about putting energy and intention. Um, how long does it take to, uh, I guess it depends on someone's home, if they, if they have a big home or if they just have a small apartment. But um, I guess they could start small, right, with feng shui and, and sort of, you know, add things as time goes on? Definitely. It's, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to feng shui your entire house. Um, you know, here's where, here's where I usually tell people to start. You know, what is your least favorite area or room of your house? Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that holds the most transformation, it's very ripe for transformation um, because that room or area represents some aspect of you. And it could be a psychological aspect or it could be, you know, the could use the boggle map tool to see, you know, what area of your life is in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, start again, removing any clutter or removing anything you don't like, which is the same thing, by the way, <laughs> something you don't like is clutter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then rearranging so, for example, if this is uh, like a, a guest bedroom that's become a junk room or, or a room that it doesn't really have an identity, so it's become, like, become a junk room and you never go in there because it's become a junk room, the first step would be to removing the junk, the clutter, or, or you know, what's not necess- then rearranging the room um, if necessary, and then seeing um, what you want to bring in, an altar table, a desk, or you know, whatever the room, um, the, the function of the room is. That's interesting. Mm. Do you have any ideas about um, like if people want to knock down walls? Because that changes the energy of the room, of houses too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, walls are represent boundaries, and it's, it's interesting uh, to see how our floor plans as a as a, as a society have it has evolved. We've we've we have less and less fewer and fewer walls as our floor plan has 
has um, evolved. You mean in, it, in most homes today, there's less less walls kind of thing? Yeah. You know, if you look at it, go to like a, a, a bungalow or a Victorian home, you know, if, if all the rooms are very small and compartmentalized. Usually they've taken, all, in, our, in today's world, for those homes, they've taken, removed the doors so that it flows much easier. Oh, I see. You know, now we have, you know, very open, what we consider open floor plans. Okay. Um, especially in loft spaces where there's the only walls are really for the bathroom. Hmm. Um, so we, yeah, we've become fewer and fewer walls, um, which is, you know, it's also represents um, our minds opening as well. That's interesting because hmm. I guess that would occur in people in people's homes if they wanted to add a room or add a wall uh, versus take a wall down. I guess um, would they want to just look and just sort of see how that would affect their their overall. Um, happiness and well-being in a space before they did that. I guess yes, definitely. Um, sometimes in pe- innovations, people create what we call missing corners in feng shui, and uh, so yeah, you, it is good to be con- or to, to to get some feng shui knowledge before doing a renovation. And also going back to the knocking down walls, you know, as I was saying before, our homes have have a soul and, and an energy, and you always want to. And this might sound silly, but you always want to ask and or get the home's permission to to do major major construction like that. Oh, okay. Because it, you know, it's an, it's like you said, it's an energy and it shifts the energy. And you know, some there's some walls. I mean, obviously, if it's a supporting wall, then you yeah, you definitely want to honor that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't knock me down. <laughs> but yeah. um. Yeah, I mean, it's good to, you know, move things around and stuff, but, you know, just, just always, you know, respect and honor the energy of, of the house um, itself. You know, what's really weird to me is in today's culture, especially in most of the homes you see today, uh, most every house you see, unless it's one of those, have you ever heard of those earth ship homes that they have uh, built out in the desert and they're completely self-sustainable? Mm. Um, but most homes you go into today are very, have very tight corners and very, um, kind of harsh edges, harsh edges, and very perpendicular angles and things like that. Um, if you were building a home, would you would you build the home with no corners? Would you make more round spaces? Is there an element in which the shape of the home affects our energy as well? As well? Yeah, actually, the the um, home that I mentioned that I did the renovation on it was a um, Hollywood style bungalow. Adobe, and it had uh, rounded wall, rounded corners, really? and oh my gosh, I that was like my favorite thing about the house was really? its rounded corners. Yes, it was wow. wonderful. What is it about the sharp edges and the sharp corners? Everything's at a right angle, isn't it? It's so uh, yeah. It's so it's it feels like a very male energy to me. Mm, yes, good point. And it tends you know, with those sharp corners. That's where the the energy um, can. St- uh, co- coagulate uh-huh. and, and stagnate. So if you had the rounded corners, it doesn't do that so much. Yeah, I would imagine we stayed in, a, in a, this really incredible uh, retreat recently in the Dominican Republic, and uh, and the room that we stayed in had no corners, and so it was interesting because the furniture in there uh, did. So the room that we had, it sort of just flowed. It was um, had no corners at all, just really soft edges and rounded edges, uh, and the but. The furniture we had, obviously the bed, the dresser, all had right angled mm. edges. And so um, the furniture didn't look like it fit in that room because it was just like, where do you put this piece of furniture? Right? <laughs> right. It like, didn't fit. It was a little odd. But I guess if you, I mean, if, if you really had all the money in the world, you can even create furniture that kind of acquiesces to the wall shapes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I guess the, the because the rounded walls, it made the furniture seem like a, like a, Stuck out like a sore thumb, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did, it did. I bet there's a good way to marry that somehow, though, if you get a little more creative. But is you would start living in a place that looks like the Jetson. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like <all these> <laughs> you know? You're going to live in the Earth ship out in the <laughs> desert, aren't you? <laughs> what are your thoughts about people that have um, have a, like a home office, but maybe they have like a studio or something? And I've heard often that you want to take away any work or anything like that, like your computer desk, out of your bedroom. But um, what if they live in a studio and they have this sort of workstation that has to be in their sleeping environment? Yeah, good question. You know, with home offices, which you know more and more people are having, and also just with our mobile our mobile world, it's more important than ever to create these boundaries. And and if if you don't have the walls to create the boundary, then you need to find another way to do the, to create the boundary. And so, 
you know, just separating the space as much as possible. And it could be as simple as an area rug that the desk is on. Just you know, area rugs are a great way to um, delineate, delineate spaces without having a wall. Um, and just, you know, trying to create some sort of boundary. And because, you know, I'm sure you guys experience is it's so easy to, um, to blur the lines mm-hmm. between work and home. And uh, if we can do that in our spaces, it will help. Um, you know, if you have a, home, a designated home office, it's nice. You can you know, close the door so that mm-hmm. I'm at my office um, as opposed to working on your kitchen table. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, using, this, using, your, using space as much as possible to facilitate these things is, is um, using it to your advantage as much as, much as possible. Yeah, I've heard of people doing, you know, hanging a little like a um, something that's very nice looking, but like they would hang something from the ceiling to delineate um, the space, uh, you know, that they work in in their or a screen like on the ground, kind of. Yeah. yeah, or sometimes maybe even one of those. What are those things called um, in the Japanese culture where you um, change behind these things? Yeah, isn't that like a changing screen thing? A changing screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah it seems like yeah. that might might work yes. for someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, it probably has a little bit to do with too. If you like, I have a desk in our bedroom because it's you know we don't have a lot of options right now. But I like my work, so it doesn't stress me out. But I think if it was something I had to go sit down and do every day that stressed me out, I would start resenting that space. But that's true. Um, I don't know if that has something to do with it either. Definitely. You know, I'm a big proponent of if it's not broke, don't fix fix it. So with regards to the bedroom, you know, the first the first question is, you know, are you sleeping well? Right. If you're not, then let's let's you know yeah. let's see what we need to change around. Yeah, I totally agree with so that. So the bedroom is um, like like you said, no no one area of the house is more important than another. They just represent different things. But because the bedroom is an area where we spend so much time, um, if you were to give an importance to it, I guess it would be up there on on the top of the list, wouldn't it? Definitely, if if relationships is a is a um, issue going on in your life, everyone's life right now, if that's like a challenge or something they want to improve upon, then the first place I would look would be the bedroom. Hmm. The bedroom usually tells me everything, um, which by the way, so when someone, someone's home, I can pretty much go in someone's space and pretty much tell what their life situation is like. I mean, that's how much our home is a mirror for ourselves and it's almost like a you know, palm reader reading someone's palm. Um, uh-huh. That's how spaces are for me. And so... With relationship issues, the first place I look is in the is in the master bedroom. Hmm. Um, it really usually it usually will show where any of the um, issues or challenges lie. Yeah, that's fascinating too. Because um, a lot of times, what we've heard is, um, you know, we've heard things where people were will want to attract um, like a, a husband or a wife, and uh, and they look at their lives, and um, you know, they may sleep, you know. They might have a king bed, for example, a big bed, but they sleep right in the middle of it. And sometimes if they end up creating a space for their future or potential partner, um, these types of things. And so changing or when you drive into your driveway and you park on one side instead of parking right in the middle, you're sort of um, opening a space. Mm-hmm. almost. Yes, that could be like a living extension of feng shui of, of how you're actually living too, right? Yeah. And, you know, what what you're saying is. One of the things I love doing is really incorporating law of attraction and intention into the feng shui. And that's where you really get um, the best results. So not, you're, you're using, you know, putting in the intention of creating space for someone else um, into your space. So it's, it's like in a, a little double whammy. I love it because if you're going to do one thing, you might as well do both, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. So people can find you at uh, tishamorris.com and you have these uh, these workshops that you do. I like the fact that you do them four times a year. Is that based on the seasons? No, just um, demand and okay and my schedule. So yeah, there's no there's no rhyme or reason to it. <laughs> that is so cool. And so um, people can find your books, both of your books on your website as well? Yes, tishamorse.com can pretty much lead you anywhere you want to go. <laughs> nice. I your website it. is beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Beautiful. And what do they get if they sign up to your newsletter list? They get um, the, the, um, the, a copy of the Bagua map and shows you how to apply it over your, your, your floor plan as well, um, as, well as the um, 
the reference list that you that you referenced with the the list of the symbols of the home. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And so I, I saw that you're interested in sacred geometry, and as well, you're uh, uh, how do you say it, Reiki or Reiki? Reiki. Reiki. Yeah, Reiki. Mm-hmm. So you do Reiki as well. Yes. Wow, wow. that's so cool. So, so energy you, is your thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I actually started out doing energy healing first, and then um, and then when the whole feng shui thing came around, I uh, space clearing. I realized is basically you know energy healing our spaces. So it actually has become sort of my niche within feng shui is, is the energy component and energy healing our spaces. That is so cool. You have so many different areas of interest and you're a yoga instructor as well. Yes. <laughs> my gosh. Do you, what do, don't you do? do you do yoga at home or do you go somewhere for <laughs> um, Usually somewhere else. I'm a, I would love to have a better home practice, but, um, but usually I, I go to a, two classes. That is so cool. And so you're also interested in health and nutrition, obviously with all these things too. Oh, definitely. Yes. It's 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 kind of interesting too because you can't get really into one without getting into all the other ones, can you? <laughs> right. I mean, you know, the word holistic. I always use, I always put a W on the front of holistic because it's you know the whole. Ah. It's, it's, can't. Yeah, that's the whole so thing. true. It's so true. I love it. I love it. Things uh, related, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Hang on the line, uh, Tisha. Thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate this. I um, enjoyed it. You guys are so adorable. So thank you. Uh, thank you so, so much. Hang on the line and we're going to uh, sign off the live show. I want to thank all you guys for listening live on the show. You can do that four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific at extremehealthradio.com forward slash live if you want to catch the live show. And then the podcasts are usually or typically available the same day or the next day. We're a little behind now, but uh, we're working our way through. Mm, we're catching uh, up. Catching up. So we really appreciate you guys being on the live show. So thank you so much. Thanks, Tisha. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Okay. okay. You hey, too. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. I feel like jumping in the car, going up the street, buying 40 trash bags. Trash bags. I'm glad, glad trash some glad, bags. Glad bags and just going for it. Like, yep. I cannot believe how much stuff that we have gotten rid of in the last year. And there's still more. Still more. And there's yeah. areas, there's corners I know that she, you know, like I still need to be working on. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, they, we we got some stuff that uh, we have to get rid of. Yeah, but um, we've gotten so much. I mean, our place looks fine, but I know there's a little crooks and crannies. Nooks you were and talking crannies. about getting rid of some things in the clo- in your closet, yeah, right? Yeah, in the corner of my left closet that just don't belong there, like bills and old tax returns and things like that. I wonder what that says about me. I wonder what that corner sign- sig- signifies. Sign- you know what? Is I'm that a word? Do? Signifies? Signifies, yeah. Let's see here. Let's go on to. Yeah, can you try to find it? Closet. Skeletons in the closet coming out of the closet. Mm hmm. What do you want to look at? Or what do you not want to look at? Ooh. What what's... are you hiding? Oh, gosh. Fear of being yourself? Authenticity? <laughs> or denying an aspect of yourself? <laughs> oh, my gosh. How are the. Those just completely fit, right? Those just hit home, man. (laughs) Same again. Okay, there's. uh, Let me take uh, take a look here. Let's see, because there's two different columns: the symbolism or meaning, and then the mental, emotional, physical association. So the symbolism or meaning of the closet is skeletons in the closet, coming out of the closet. What do you not want to look at, or what are you hiding? And then the a mental, emotional, physical association associated with the closet is the fear of being yourself, <laughs> authenticity, or denying an aspect of yourself. Wow. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That closet aspect to me, along with the, you know how we've been hearing the word shadow, our shadow self. Yeah. There's so something to that, that corner that just gets me hung up every time. It's like... Yeah, it stresses me out knowing what's in there, and yet I just shut it. And now it's to the point where if you open it, stuff like papers will fall out, and that's right. the only really messy place I have in our entire house. And it drives me nuts, and I hate knowing it's in there. I'm surprised I can sleep in there at night knowing it's there. And something has been blocking me for the whole time we've lived here from from dealing with that that corner. Yeah. Ooh. You know what we didn't ask her about too is the uh, pondering the, this the upper left. What was it? The upper left burner. On your, oh, on your stove, on your, on your stove? stovetop. Yeah, what Each was th- burner represents something? Oh gosh, is it wealth as well? Oh, I don't remember. It was such a good. We had heard that podcast with somebody else talk about that, and that was so new to me. I don't remember, but it was pretty powerful. Was it wealth? Yeah, I think it was. Hmm. 
Yeah, and she talks about um, on her YouTube channel. She talks about um, you know creating an entryway, so you want to um, have uh, a, you know definite borders and, and areas of separation, and having something inspirational when you first walk into your entryway, and how all that. It's funny because it's like one of those things where it's like you know feng shui is this science. It's sort of like putting on a good radio show, and we try our best, but when people listen to a really good radio show, they think, oh, I could do that. That's really easy, or, oh, that's that's super simple. There's something about that show I just really like. I don't know yeah. what it is. Maybe it's a camaraderie between the guests. or But something, and it resonates with you. Yeah, and when you walk into a house that's uh, that's peaceful, that's energetic, that's happy, that's light, that's open and it inspires you and motivates you, it all sort of just downloads into your subconscious at once right when you walk in and you think, oh, wow, I just feel, wow, I love this place. Yeah. And it, there could be 40 or 50 things that make up the reason why you love that place. And the person who did all of those things and put those things together um, in the certain spaces and painted a certain color so that it would reflect the light, um, all that science goes into it and intention but when you walk in, you don't know why. You just think, oh, I love this place. Yeah, or this place gives me the creeps. Both equally. Hey, what did you think about what she said about how you got to uh, put intention to love the place? Well, that was I feel just like, exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, we were walking Maggie the other day and you said, you know what's up with this place? Like, you know what it is? I said, what? You said, we got to love it before we can leave it. Uh huh. And I said, wow, like that. You know, and then this is just. More confirmation. affirmation, more confirmation that that's exactly because we struggled with this home office. You know, we think, do we do we make it what we want it to look like for now or even do we just we, try to get out of here? Yeah. Even though we know we want to uh, move. Yeah. We, we don't have any intention of being here. That is, I mean, we'd love to leave today and we'd love to leave four years ago if we could have. But, right. you know, life happened and it's fine. But you're right. I mean, I think there's something about maybe it's just the lesson of starting to love your space again before yeah. you can leave it. Yeah, if you love it, maybe that's just a lesson. As soon as you love it, boom, all these opportunities happen. So because obviously it, we don't love it because we haven't I, had the opportunity. To it's so it. silly. A year and a half I've been searching online for places. A year and a half. Yeah. And nothing. Nothing's come We've up. checked out, what, maybe 12 places yeah. in the last year and a half and nothing has been right. So it's like every door just shut, 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 shut. It's yeah. very apparent that we are here for a reason for now. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was really good to hear. And in hearing from somebody who who works with spaces and understands. I just, I loved it. I needed that. Yeah, it was interesting too because what you said, how that applied to your job or any other part of your life too. Uh, if you want to get out of it, then the first thing to do is to love it, you know? Yep, I think you have to. Yeah, because I think maybe you have to. that's just the lesson and as soon as you do that then. Isn't that cool that you internally knew that though? I, yeah, it's I mean, you don't say things like that very often. That's not within my nature. It's not within that. your nature, so it was very strange. <laughs> That's more my nature because I'm more, you know, I'm the typical female, you know, energy where I'm, you know, you're I feel more, things, I'm more emotional. You're more emotional, yeah. And that's fine, but for you to say something like that, like, we got to love it before we can leave it, it was a shocker, but there was so much truth that when you said it, I my soul resonated. I thought, yeah, that's exactly what this is about. It isn't about... Um, not trusting that the money's there for a bigger place or a quieter place or, you know, any of that. It was more like, yeah, th this isn't about, this is about us mm -hmm. learning an aspect of ourselves before we can feel like we've mastered it to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I love, I love Tisha Morris. She's awesome. Isn't she great? She's beautiful. She's just a beautiful person. I'm looking at her site. She's beautiful. Her voice is beautiful. Her sight is beautiful. I feel like she, her books look beautiful, which I can't, I am going to order one. I can't wait to read it. Yeah. I really want to get into this because yeah. creating, I think it's such a big deal for people because what good is it if you don't have, if you take care of your internal health, but your health is just in shambles. Right though. And you're depressed from that, you know? Well, and you know, when she was talking, I mean, we didn't talk about this, but it translates into like your belongings, like your car. Uh -huh. It's just your space that you're occupying. It doesn't matter. Like it probably translates into how you treat a hotel room when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. The person who just like dumps all their crap all over the place, or the person that puts takes the time to put it in the drawers or hang it in the hotel closet. Or yeah. I mean, there are ways that we do things that I think set sets up that energy and it follows us. I I totally agree, and I wonder if doing things like that is sort of a cumulative thing where it's like a snowball effect and it accumulates over time. And the more energy you put into those things, because like if you go to a hotel room, for example, and you check in and you think, 
You know, I know the first thing I think is, okay, I'm only going to be here two nights. Why unpack? Yeah, that's what I go through too. You know, but if you take the intention of doing it or setting or, or making your bed every morning when you get up, even though no one is going to see the bed, um, I wonder if over the course of time, the very fact that you're putting intention into those things um, sort of snowballs and sort of changes the your life in a way where you attract things differently. Who knows, right? It's Who like knows? Thing. But I would, th- I would think so. It's like what she was talking about, living the feng shui in the sense of like the law of attraction kind of stuff. Mm. You know, you sort of live it mm-hmm. um, on a daily basis. And I, I, I suspect that if you do that for 30 days, even as just a trial test, um, you know, it, it's like, it's like the little things of being neat and tidy and organized and uh, putting things away when you're done. You know, it's yeah. like, it's, it's got to be, there's got to be something to it. Well, I, I, this might sound silly, but it's like underwear. Mm. I think for a woman, I think if you have a matching underwear set, if you're wearing a matching bra that goes with your underwear or panties, uh-huh. I think all day you feel good. No, Although no one else is going to see it. It's almost like you've set that intention today to, to know that you did something for yourself to feel right. like in order you feel or matching. You feel matching or pretty or whatever it is that makes you feel uh-huh. that, yeah, although no one might ever know that, your day is a little bit different. I mean, it sounds really crazy, but there's something psychological and mental and emotional and physical that happens when you feel like you set your day out right. And that could be making the bed, that could be having your matching underwear, it could be like not wearing a holy shirt. I mean, it could be could, all these things. You yeah, know? doing the dishes after you're done with dinner instead well, right. of letting them sit overnight. Right, not having a dish in the sink. I mean, there's all these things that are really powerful, I think. And I think that once you start opening yourself up to um, living well and taking care of yourself, and like you just read this book, uh, The Art of Ex- Extreme Self-Care, right? Oh, it's great, by talks, Cheryl Richardson. It talks all about this kind of stuff, doesn't it? Yep. And I think like Tisha and you and I were agreeing today, I don't think it can, how can it not overflow? I mean, self-care is everything from your, your, you know, physical health right. to your closet, the corner of your closet to everything in between. I mean, it is all related. It's like uh, Tisha was saying, it's this holistic with a W. It's with a, a holistic. Whole. It's, a, it's a whole. You can't have one thing without the other, I'm realizing. Because um, I realize if you go to, um, I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions to every rule, but if you were to go to like a, a, a multi-million dollar rich real estate agent who's professional and he takes his business very seriously and makes just gobs and gobs of money, if you were to go to his house, I'm sure you wouldn't find him living in a, in a little apartment that's just ramshackled, it's got messes everywhere and takeout food boxes on the counter. I mean, I'm sure you're going to walk into this pristine, elegant, nicely warm yep. uh, house that's very well put together. You know? yeah. And I'm not sure which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Does that cause him to be, uh, to want to be motivated and successful? Or is he just like that by nature, subconsciously, and because he creates this space that he lives in, does that motivate him more to be like that? Interesting. I don't know. I think there's um, there's obviously, maybe there there isn't one that comes from another. Maybe it's just it's all together. Wow. But I would say that if you want to be successful in life, and you want to um, be healthy and whole, uh, one of the things is putting yourself together, making yourself look decent. Um, it, dep- you know, it depends what you're going to go do. If you have to wear a suit and tie, then um, you, know, you do that. Or if you have to, you know, right now we're just in, in T-shirts and things. But you know, presenting yourself so that you come across well to other people and taking care of your home space, making your house the type of situation where if someone were to just come over, you wouldn't be immediately embarrassed. Right. You know? Right. That just shows that you're not actively taking care and control of the things. You're letting the things you own control you. Right. You know? Yeah, we've had unexpected, well, we've had family in town that were expected, but unexpected little pop buys, you know? And Uh I feel like it's really neat to be in a place for the first time in a long time where I thought, okay, if anyone just popped over right now, I'm not embarrassed to open my door. It might not be like waxed and dusted, but it's like, it's it's pretty streamlined. It's very well put together. Yes, and it makes me feel really good. I'm not embarrassed of it. And, you know, and and like you just said for the show, even though we're wearing t shirts and, you know, I'm a little lazy today and wearing sweats but I do feel there is a sense of me feeling like I put on a better interview or I'm able to concentrate more if I try a little bit more Uh to put myself together before an over the phone interview it's weird what transcends into yeah that space it's weird because like you said when women wear the matching bra and underwear 
Or if you're a guy and you put on a power suit, some kind of power suit, and you're really interested in being a corporate um, kind of person, then you can see how this, this just makes you feel better because uh, you feel more powerful, you feel more like you fit in. And um, and so the same goes with your house. And if you come home, because the home should be a sanctuary, right? When you I've come home. I always said that. Yeah. And and this it's like the, the Holy of Holies, like in the... Uh, what, what, what was that? The Ark of the Covenant the Ark, in, in <laughs> yeah. the Bible? Yeah, yeah. You know, the temple. And so the temple itself was holy. But then if you go further in, the Holy of Holies was where the Ark of the Covenant was. And it kind of seems like the Holy of Holies in your house is your bedroom, mm. you know, and where you really go there and escape. And we didn't even talk about anything like um, using crystals or the pyramids and different shapes you can use in your bedroom and things. But, um, you know, having your whole place be a, pl- a place of inspiration um, but the question is, what do you do if you have kids and you have kids that are throwing toys all around? And I mean, that opens up a whole different perspective on how you keep your, your I wonder if she talks <laughs> about that in her book. That is so true. You know? Yeah, no, that that's true. Cause kids are going to be kids and with, with kids come a certain amount of stuff and a mess and, mess, and they yeah. don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, I bet there is a ritual you can get into as the adult uh, until that kid is responsible and old enough to be able to put things away and understand why that's important. Uh-huh. Or maybe you make that a part of your ritual of like, okay, when the kid's in nap time, even if they're going to make a mess after they wake up again, I'm going to pick it up and put it all in this box for now. Like uh-huh. just do the things that you feel like you can have control of with still having a kid and, you know, not just being a tyrant and letting them have no toys out. And, yeah. You know, cause I, I actually know of someone who, oh, this is horrible, who, <laughs> <laughs> who, um, they're they're a couple. They're like my parents' age. Uh-huh. Their son married this woman who is so type A, like so type A anal. Like she will not let them come. She won't let them come over to her house. Who? Uh, she the, will... the in-laws. Oh, really? They haven't been there in like three years. And they have multiples. They have triplets. Really? And, you know, the grandparents are so involved with these kids and doing so much, but the kids always go to grandma and grandpa's house. So when the, when the grandmother, the friend of mine was saying the other day, like that they hadn't been over to their daughter-in-law's house for like three years, I was like, what? And she goes, yeah, she's just got this thing where she cannot have us walk into her house. She doesn't like dirty shoes. She doesn't like footprints. She doesn't like like people in her space. Like, So her space is ultra clean or she's like a, a, cl- a clever Oh, no, person? no, no. Like ultra clean, but okay. to like almost a fault where she can't have her own family visit. And I thought, okay, well then you're That's kind of, much. you're treading on like a mental disorder. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm not bagging on her, but I think there's some stuff to be worked on there because if you can't have a house that's lived in by the people you love and your kids are seeing this very bizarre pattern of you not letting their grandparents come to visit. Yeah, that's I mean, weird. that's, that's over the top. Yeah, and I, I felt really bad for them. I was like, I can't believe that you're in there. They were so good natured. They're like, well, you know, I mean, certain people just have, we all have our weird stuff. And wow. But I'm thinking, wow, there's, there's something definitely going on there, you know? Yeah. Um, that's very strange. Made me kind of sad. Cause you think of, you know, people that are hoarders would do that cause they're embarrassed of the place they live in. But when exactly. you're the o- complete opposite, I mean, yeah, I see that all the time where people will have rooms in their houses where they don't want anyone to walk or they don't want anyone to walk in with shoes on. Right. Um, Which is fine. Yeah, it's You set the intention for your house. I mean, they yeah. I don't like dirty shoes all over my house. I mean, that's gross. I don't like that either. Mm-hmm. But when it becomes where you're valuing things and order more than people, to me that's where it, the scale tips. Yeah, because this kind of stuff teaches you uh, attachment and saying, you know what? Mm-hmm. It's just a thing. It's right. just, even if it's a $4,000 piece of furniture, it's just, you know, where's that thing going to be in 300 years from now? It's going to be in a trash know, dump, in a trash dump, you know, buried underground probably in 400 hope- years. That thing's done. Hopefully not in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Halfway between here and Hawaii. Yeah. That wouldn't be good with all the other plastic. Oh, I know. But yeah, like all the, all the stuff, it's just, it's all stuff, all this computer equipment, you know, and, Two, three hundred years, it's, it's going to be buried in the ground somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. And so everything, we don't own anything. Mm-hmm. And so having this, um, obsessive anal type A kind of attitude towards, uh, you know, treating people, uh, differently because they walk on our house with shoes on. I mean, isn't the thing that's the most important our relationship with that person and more so than whatever that yeah. thing is? You well, know, you carpet? and I would hope so, but yeah, oh, we, we, we value that more, but. I mean, there you go. I think it just becomes a neurosis of sorts where, yeah, you know, it just gets out of control. People might have not started out um, with that intent and it just becomes something that they feel like they can control and then it gets weird. So, I mean, I get how that can happen. Yeah. You know, but. Well, I'm just glad we moved our trash can. 
<laughs> if that's what we took away, then I am too. Now we have what a fruit basket there. We do have a fruit basket. Our fruit container there, I guess. Now, if we that. can keep some of our fruit from rotting. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Need there to go through go. it faster. That's right. All great, right. Great, great So we're going to wrap that one up. That was episode 294. So what we'll do is we'll put all of the links on that show page. If, if you go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash 294, you can check that out. We'll have all the links to everything that we talked about on the show uh, there as well. And if you guys could do us a huge favor, it really does help us a lot. Can you guys go over to iTunes um, some point and write us a review and give us a rating? Uh, that really does help us a lot. We're trying to increase our listeners. And I believe one of the the ways to do that is through iTunes and and um, and, and having positive reviews on your on your podcast. So if you guys could do that, that would be super helpful to us uh, so that our show could be found more often in iTunes by new listeners. And also, if you guys would like to support us um, financially, we accept donations if you're interested in doing that. Uh, that really does help us a lot. We have a store with all kinds of really great products on our store. And we also have our sponsors. Check out our sponsors page. Without our sponsors, we couldn't do this show for free. I mean, they are just incredible companies uh, like the S&C today. We have a ton of their products and uh, are starting to use them and just love what they're all about. We spoke to Dr. Ron Cousin a while back uh, about everything that he's up to with the uh, the sea minerals and the um, iodine and the different products he's making from the sea. So uh, make sure to check out our sponsor page if you want high quality stuff um, that we stand behind wholeheartedly. Um, other than that, just pass the show on to your friends. If you, if you uh, found the show valuable and helpful, that would be a great way to share it on Facebook and things, right? Yeah, and I would love if people got in the forum and uh, if they get the book or continue down the Feng Shui path to post stuff that they see happening um, with their journey into yes. organization decluttering and, and setting things up for abundance and life change, which would be really cool. Yeah, continue the discussion of this show in our forum too. It's a free to sign up for an account and you can just hop register. on over there. Yeah, and talk about the uh, the whole show and um, you know some changes you're making in your life. Pretty cool. Let's share it with the community. Yay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. A lot of fun, you guys, and we will catch you on the next episode. Booyah, you got it. <laughs> That was good. Thank you. This is Josie, Justin's mum. Don't tell him, but I know he would absolutely be really happy if you would sign up to his free weekly newsletter. And don't forget to share this with all your friends. This is the buzzing bumblebee signing off. Oh, so good. Hello. Oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to this episode. It's time to go for now, but our mission does not end with this show. Justin and Kate will be back with another interview packed full of ideas, discoveries, and unique ways to regain your health. Head on over to extremehealthradio.com forward slash subscribe and instantly download our free gift too that contains cutting edge strategies to start making healthy lifestyle changes today. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease. Or